Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Get Started Fast with New Blue Effects' Titler Pro tutorial series. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe, and in this lesson, we're going to continue talking about Titler Pro 2 and 2.5 by talking about how we're going to get in and stylize the look of our text and our titles. Specifically, we're going to get in starting with the basics and talking about just how we're going to get in and change the color. We're going to then move on to talking about how we can apply things like gradients and even how you can get in and create your own custom bevels for your text and do it all from within the comfort of your Media Composer timeline. Okay, short introduction here, let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for my Windows friends out there, and I have an instance of Titler Pro in my timeline here. Nothing fancy, we just dropped it in. And let's get into the title designer to create some cool looking text. What I'm going to do is simply right click on my title. I'm going to navigate down to add edit title. Now, of course, if you're working in version 2.5 of Titler Pro, you will be brought to the quick edit window. If you're working in version 2, you'll be heading right into the title designer, which is what I'm going to do now. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to click on title designer. I'm going to be brought to the title designer window and let's enter some text here. I'm just going to type in new blue FX and what we want to do with this text is I'm just going to pick a nice bold font like impact. So let's choose impact. There we go. Let's set the point size to be something like 72. I think that's pretty good. And you know, for me, one thing that I always like to point out is what I like to call a good place to start. Now, if you're in a rush and you've just, you know, installed Titler Pro 2 or 2.5, sometimes you just want to get in and see what presets you might have available to you, you know, before you take the time to create your own. And that's one thing that I love about Titler Pro. We do have a lot of presets if we head on over to the library tab. Now with the library tab selected, you'll see that by default I'm on the styles dropdown. Now this window is going to vary depending on what you happen to have installed, what products you have installed from New Blue Effects. The more products you have installed, the more options you're going to see inside of the library. But by default, you're going to see the styles tab and inside of here, you're going to see all of these different preset styles to choose from to get you started creating some cool titles. And of course, what I love about Titler Pro is the fact that, well, much like with the styles and with a lot of other things like transitions, if you want to see what any of these uh, styles look like, all you have to do is simply hover over them with your mouse and you're going to get an immediate update to show you exactly what all of these different text styles look like. Okay. But for us, what we want to do is we just want to get in and just start creating some basic text, do some things like color changes, adding drop shadows and things like that. So for us, what we're going to do is in the attributes tab, we're actually going to click on the style sub tab. Now, once we're in the style sub tab, I actually had a little bit of my thunder stolen here because by default, we actually have a drop shadow applied to our text. And just for right now, I'm just going to remove that by simply clicking on the trash can icon. Now let's start with basics. In a lot of cases, white might not be the color of font that you want to work with. Okay, so how do we get in and start making alterations to the look of our text? Well, it's actually very simple. By default, when you create a new title, a new 3D face is applied to that title. Now a 3D face could be you know, one of a few different things. It could be a standard color, it could be a gradient, or it could even be an image or video clip that you actually add to your title. So let's just start with the basics. Let's start with a standard color. How do we get in and change the color of our font? Well, it's actually very simple. We have the ability to get in and of course eye drop any color that we might want to choose. Like for example, if I want to choose this brown color down here, all I have to do is come down and eye drop it and my text will immediately update to be that brown color. Now that's great if you happen to, you know, have a color in your shot that you want to eye drop, but in a lot of cases I find myself wanting to just come into the color picker and choose the color of the font that I want to create. Now I'm just going to create something a little bit different here. Let's sort of go, uh, let's sort of go with this color purple here, just like that. I'm simply going to come down and say, okay. And now my text is that color. And you know, if I was done with it, it's ready to be saved out and used in my timeline. Let's talk about getting in and stylizing this up a little bit more by talking about gradients. Now, gradients are something that sometimes are a little bit difficult for people to wrap their head around. Not necessarily what gradients are, but how they're going to work with your text. A gradient is very simple. It's a transition from one color to another that you're going to apply to your text. So maybe at the top you want the top to be blue, you want the bottom to be red, and of course that transition color is going to be purple in the middle. 
So to do that, I'm gonna simply click on the gradient option. Now you're gonna notice that as soon as I click on the gradient option, a new option has appeared underneath the color chooser, which is stretch to paragraph. Now I'm gonna show you how that works in just a second. But what I wanna do first is I wanna get in and set up my gradient. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna click on the color swatch, and as soon as I do, you're immediately gonna notice now that my text has now become black and white, and you can see the gradient that's happening on, happening on each character of the new blue effects text. And you'll see that on the left, we have a color wheel. On the right, we have our black and white gradient. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna grab the gradient and just swing it right around. So it's actually sitting perfectly vertical, just like that. So you'll see that we have our gray at the top, black at the bottom transition here. Now if I wanted to get in and actually change this to be a color, it's actually very simple. Believe it or not, there actually is a color applied right now, and by default, the color wheel is sitting directly in the middle, so that's why I have the color of white. But if I select that color white, I now have the ability, now, you know, I used red and blue before, so let's use red and blue as the example. I'm just gonna take the color, drag it all the way up to red, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the black color down here. Now, you'll notice that as soon as I select it, the color wheel goes black, and also the slider has moved from the right side to the left side. Well, this is the lightness value of my color. You'll see that if I take that and drag it right up, we get all our colors back. Now, of course, by default, it is in the middle, so of course, the text is gonna be white at the bottom, but we are gonna make that blue. So now, basically, what we have is a red top to our text, a blue bottom to our text with that purple transition in the middle. Now, of course, if I wanted my gradient to be a little bit uh, sharper, not as smooth in the middle, I can actually grab the colors and bring them closer together like this. So we have a much more defined uh, difference between these two colors. And of course I have also have the ability to make them actually a sharp transition from one to the other or a lot smoother depending on where I drag the actual gradient to, okay? Now this is kind of what I would call a standard gradient. We sort of have one color at the top, one color at the bottom and a transition happening between the two of them. But you'll notice that when we started out, our gradient actually looked like this, and it's actually brought up a little bit of a problem that it looks like we've run into, which is the fact that the gradient, even though in this look, this appears to be happening to all of the text, it's actually not. It's happening to each one of the letters, but to be perfectly honest, it doesn't really matter because in this case, you know, it's basically one look for the entire text. But as soon as I swing this over this way, it's now on a per letter basis, which I don't want. I actually want to have it be red at the left and blue at the right. So how do I get in and adjust that? Well, it's actually very simple. And you'll remember we had that new command that suddenly became active when I switched over to gradient, which was of course, stretch to paragraph. As soon as I stretch to paragraph, what's gonna happen is that gradient is gonna be stretched from the left side of my paragraph all the way over to the right side of my paragraph, just like this. Boom, there we go. And there's the gradient actually functioning exactly the way that we want it to. Very cool and very simple to use. Now, of course, you know, in the end, if we wanted to get in and apply, let's just say, let's apply a still image here. Now, of course, this could be a still image. It could be moving video. And let me just see what we got in here. I've got some bricks. Why don't we take the bricks and I'm simply going to apply them as a texture just like that. Now again, you're gonna notice that as soon as I selected image or video, a couple other options have appeared. You'll see that if I switch back to gradient, we suddenly get access to not only environment map right here, but we also get access to map to sides as well as variable. Now there's a couple in here that I do wanna point out. Now first, before I do that, I wanna mention that in a lot of cases when you bring in a still image, it might not be positioned exactly where you want it to be positioned. You might need to get in and make some tweaking with it. Well, it's actually very easy to do. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna navigate up here to the move and size texture icon. I'm gonna simply gonna click on it. And as soon as I do, you're gonna notice a bounding box has now appeared on the screen. Well, what this bounding box gives us the flexibility to do is to actually increase the size of the texture if we want to. Of course, we could shrink it down as well. Now the texture will loop automatically for you. But what I have the ability to do is to adjust the scale of the texture if I want to, but I can also adjust its position. Now, let me just adjust its position just like this. There we go, very cool. And of course, again, like I said, we can actually apply an environment map to this text as well, which is gonna take that image and it's gonna apply it to the environment. So if I was to come back to my object here, and let's just rotate this, you're gonna see that it looks like that brick is part of the environment around the text. Very cool. OK, 
Okay. Now, one thing I should have pointed out as well, I'm just going to take my text. I'm just going to swing it around a little bit here. Because sometimes you might get into this situation where you know you've taken an element, you've you know rotated it too much or scaled it too much, you know changed its position. You really just need to get everything back to what I consider to be normal or zeroed inside of your canvas. Well, it's actually very simple to do. All I'm going to do is inside of the object tab, I'm simply going to come to either the position. In this case, it's rotation that we're working with. And I'm actually just going to reset the rotation parameters to get our text exactly back where we had it. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to turn the environment map off to get my bricks texture back the way we want. Because I wanted to talk about the other option that's appeared here, which is map to sides. Now, to show you map to sides, what I'm actually going to do is just extrude this element. And to extrude, very simple, I'm just going to punch in the extrusion value. In this case, I'll just punch in 10. And you'll see that as soon as I do that, we now actually have an extrusion going on on our text. Now, let's just rotate the text here because this brings up another interesting little issue, which is what's going on on the sides of my text. What basically happens when you apply a texture to your text is the pixels that are the ed at the edge of each letter end up getting stretched all the way down in the extrusion, which is not quite what we would want it to look like. I'd actually want it to have it look like there's bricks moving on the side of the text as well, or appearing on the side of the text as well. Well, believe it or not, that's what the map to sides feature is for. As soon as I select it, you'll see now that we now have brick over all of this text. And that text actually looks really cool. And has a really cool 3D look to it as well. Now, again, once I've rotated my text, to a position that I just want to reset it to, all I got to do is head back to the Option tab. I'm just going to reset rotation, and we're right back to where we started. Okay, so I want to move on, and I want to talk about 2D and 3D layer styles. Now, again, I'd mentioned that I had my thunder stolen a little bit when I came into the Titler Pro interface because I already had a drop shadow applied to my text. Now, what I'm going to do is just head back to the Style tab because a drop shadow is considered to be a 2D layer. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my extrusion back to be zero here for just one second. Now, I'm not going to use drop shadow because you saw an example of that when I came into Titler Pro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down the 2D layer option, and I'm going to select an outline glow, just kind of like that. Now, the reason that this is considered to be a 2D element is because if I actually come to my rotation here and I rotate this element around, you're going to notice right away that the element is perfectly flat. That is what makes it a 2D element. It's the same with the drop shadow. Now, of course, these 2D layers are strictly to get in and stylize your text. In this case, we're obviously adding a glow to it. We can get in and adjust things like the opacity, the blur, the thickness, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, again, come back to object. I'm going to reset this because one thing that I always like to show when I talk about Titler Pro is the very cool 3D capabilities of the 3D layers that you can add as sort of a an icing on the cake layer to your text. I'm going to come back to the style for a second. Again, I'm just going to remove the outline by simply clicking on the delete style layer trash cam. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude our text back. And what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to just switch back to a normal color here. Let's just go to something. Um, you know what? Let's just leave white. I think white is a good color. Uh, to use here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the 3D layer style. I'm going to drop that down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a 3D outline. Okay. Now, once I select 3D outline, you're going to notice an outline has appeared, but something a little bit odd is going on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this text a little bit just so that you can see that the outline has been created and it's actually easier to see from the back. The only problem is, is that it's in the wrong position. And it's not exactly the same width as my text. And you can see right there. Now, what I'm going to do is just position my text right about here because it's kind of a good place to see things from. OK, now the first thing that I'm going to do with this layer is I'm going to adjust the layer depth and put the layer depth back at zero. And you'll see that by doing that, what I've basically done is I've lined up the outline with the basically the face here so that they're sitting exactly at the zero mark. But you can see, first of all, we got a little bit of clipping going on here that I'm going to fix in just a second. You'll see that the actual uh, outline doesn't stretch all the way back to the back of the text. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually not going to have it stretch all the way to the back of the text. I'm actually going to offset it a little bit back from the front and then have it a little bit offset from the back just so that when the text rotates, we've got the same look on the front and the back. And it's actually very easy to do. The first thing that we need to know is how much is our 3D face extruded? Well, our 3D face is extruded 10. I think what I'm going to do here is just do it a little bit more. Let's put this at about 15, I think. OK, 
okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the extrusion, that's right, remember, this is an extrusion, it's a 3D style layer here, and I'm gonna put the extrusion at about 12, okay? Now once I've done that, all I'm gonna do now is adjust the layer depth here, and you'll see that I can just position this at about the halfway point in the text, which is right about there, to give us more or less the look that we want. Now I'm just gonna fix that clipping here, by simply coming in, and I'm just gonna adjust the thickness here. Let's put the thickness at about eight, okay? So this way, when we rotate, you'll see that we actually now have our text looking the way that we want. And what's very cool, you'll see, is that we have the same look at the front and at the back. And of course, we could get in and, you know, adjust the thickness to be whatever we want. I could put it at like 12 if I wanted to. Rotate this right back. Now, of course, if we don't get the rotation right back exactly the way that we want, no problem. We could just simply reset the rotation just like that. Okay, now one last thing that I do want to talk about before we wrap up, and I'm gonna head back to the style tab. I wanna talk a little bit about bevels because a lot of you know graphic designers, motion graphic designers, like to add bevels to their text when they're working. And in some cases, you know, you might have standard bevels that you can apply, but what I like to do is actually get in and create my own bevels, which is very cool. And it's also a very cool feature inside of Titler Pro. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna leave my 3D out line on here just you know because I think it looks very cool and I'm gonna just zoom in on my text I'm not actually zooming in remember I'm actually adjusting the Z position of my text that we can reset in just a second but I just want to just get in so I can see the edge of my text here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a bevel to my text now I want to make sure that I'm not applying the bevel to the 3d outline I want to make sure that I'm applying it to the actual 3d face and I'm gonna come down to the bevel size right here in the advanced section of the 3d face I'm just gonna put the bevel size at about, I don't know, point, let's put it at point two for right now. And you'll see that as soon as I put that in there, the bevel immediately appears on my text. So how do I get in and create my own custom bevel? Well, it's actually very simple. Right below the advanced option where I can twirl it down is of course my bevel creation tool. And all I have to do is basically just create the bevel that I want right here and it's gonna immediately update in my canvas to show me what this new bevel looks like. Now, what's also very cool, and of course, again, I'm just gonna reset my position here, is that I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna just rotate my uh, new blue effects around because I've created this bevel on the front of the text here. The only problem is, is that when I rotate the text around, it's not on the back the way it was on the front. And the whole point is when I have this rotate, I want the front and back to look exactly the same. So all I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna head back to the style tab, I'm gonna head back down to the advanced section, and right below the bevel size, we have the ability to get in and actually simply include the backside in the bevel, just like that. Very cool, very quick, and very simple to not only create, but to apply it to the back side of the text. Okay, now in our next and final lesson, we're gonna talk about the all important animation of your titles. And I'm gonna show you not only how simple it is to get in and animate cool looks with your titles, but I'm also gonna show you the elastic timeline and why it's a powerful tool to have at your disposal, especially if you happen to be sitting beside a producer or director who's constantly changing their mind about how long or short they want their titles to be.